And now we're getting ready for our segment, Get Connected with Trisha Crane. Welcome to Get Connected on the Alabama Way. I am Trisha Crane. I'm the Executive Director of the Alabama School Connection, which is a news site devoted to covering kindergarten through 12th grade education in Alabama. I am excited today to have with us Thomas Raines, who is the Policy Director for A Plus Education Partnership. Thank you for having me. Yes, thank you for being here. Um, Thomas drove in. I appreciate that. <laughs> Um, uh, Thomas is going to tell us a little bit about uh, A-plus education partnership, but he's really here today to talk with us about the results that have come out recently of the newest standardized test right. that our children are taking called the ACT ASPIRE, and that's A-S-P-I-R-E. Correct. We're right. aspiring, right? Right. So the test is given to children in grades 3 through 8 and it's our newest uh, incarnation of annual standardized testing. It's a very different test. And uh, before we get into the details, though, I'd like, Thomas, if you could, just tell us a little bit about A+. Plus. Sure. A+, plus is a, uh, a nonprofit here in Alabama. We are based in Montgomery. We work, um, in short, we work for grade schools for every child. Um, I'm the policy director there, so I work with folks in the State Department of Education and also other state officials. And we have two divisions, the Alabama Best Practices Center mm -hmm. that provides professional development opportunities for teachers and, and leaders across the state, mm -hmm. and also A Plus College Ready that works to expand advanced placement and pre-AP course offerings in math, science, and English across the state. That's good. One day we're going to do that topic because that's a very, yeah. uh, very important topic as well. We'd be happy to talk about that too sometime. Yeah, and and the reason that I asked Thomas to come in today is you did a wonderful uh, article back in December. We've been talking about the ACT Aspire and how different it is mm -hmm. from our previous test called the Alabama Reading and Mathematics Test. Right, very different. Um, very different bar for how we measure our children, mm -hmm. and they're you know, recognizing that standardized tests are one snapshot uh, in the spring of yes. kids' progress, we still have to know where they stand, right? Right. right. And um, we will link the article, uh, we'll provide a link here on the show so folks can read that. It's a very good explanation that will go much deeper than we're able to get into today. Um, but. You know, tell us a little bit about why Why do you think that we, you're, you're excited about this, this move to the ACT Aspire. I am, and, and we are at, at A+. Plus mm -hmm. And um, we uh, have been working with folks in the State Department of Education, and, and they're excited about it, too. It, it's really um, a change in Alabama. And for the first time, we have um, accurate data on where students stand in mm -hmm. education. We have, we, have, we've, we have honest data that can provide feedback to teachers and to students around where students stand. And, and how close they are and whether or not they're on track to, to being college and career ready by the time they graduate. Right, and you mentioned a term, college and career ready. Mm -hmm. um, everybody has you know, a, a way of explaining it. The way that I <coughs> look at it is um, being able to be successful in college or being mm -hmm. ready for career, okay? And that's right. sort of the simple, you know, if you, if you go straight out of high school into a career. Right. Um, you want, you, you have, there's a basic set of skills in reading and math and English and, and mm -hmm. writing and that and you know those soft skills of being able to um, you know follow instructions and those kinds right. of things and the ACT Aspire is let's talk a, a moment about how it's benchmarked sort of backwards right uh, to the ACT the ACT sure. is the standard college entrance exam that we use mostly right. here in Alabama there is another college entrance exam called the SAT that some some students take some but, students take it right and the exciting we are, thing, we're considered more of an ACT state. Right. More and, students take the ACT here. And just briefly to mention that last spring was the first time, the spring of 2014 right. was the first time all of the 11th graders mm -hmm. in Alabama took the ACT, right. uh, giving an opportunity to a lot of students who had never taken it before who might not have even considered college. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Given free of charge to all juniors in Alabama mm -hmm. for the first time. And that really could, could open doors to a lot of students who may have grown up in a situation where the, uh, college has never really been considered in their in their house, and it, you know suddenly they they're given the ACT, they do well, and that could open doors for them that weren't open before. In terms of scholarship, in terms right? of scholarship, yeah, really expand knowing expand the where horizons. You're, right, right. So that's exciting. Mm -hmm. um, but we're gonna, we'll go back. So there's this ACT, and then there is the ACT Aspire, and right. that was sort of. I want to use the word back mapped is the word that I hear a lot is that okay if this is where we want to be if this is the end game the end goal in the 11th or 12th grade of where we want to be 
How, what skills do we measure all along the way to make certain that we're ready? Sure. Okay. And so in Alabama, we're doing the ACT Aspire for grades three through eight. Right. Right. Once a year, this test is given. It's in the spring. Uh, I, I want to mention that it's a lot fewer days than we used to have for yeah. the uh, Alabama Reading and Mathematics test. You'll hear that referred to as the ARMT. Right. Uh, we love acronyms, don't we? Uh, but uh, the ACT Aspire will always be the ACT Aspire, I think. I can't come up with any shorter name for nope, it. No, I think it's, it is, yeah, it is the ACT Aspire, and it's part of that, the suite of tests that mm -hmm. um, Alabama decided to, to work with ACT to develop tests from um, that align with this college readiness exam that all juniors are now taking. So we've got um, the ACT Aspire in grades three through eight, and then the, the quality core end of course tests mm -hmm. uh, that are subject specific courses in, in high school classes. Right now, we're, Alabama's giving those tests in um, Algebra one and 10th grade English, right. and then eventually we could expand others. But um, the ACT Aspire, as you said, replaces the Alabama reading and math test in grades three through eight. Okay, now we're going we're gonna to tiptoe into the results, okay? Mm -hmm. The results have been a little bit controversial, but I think that we were well prepared for it. Um, we knew that it's a different test than the right. ARMT. You cannot compare the ACT Aspire to the ARMT. I right. think we've been saying that right. for a long, long time. Uh, and I think folks understand that to, for the most part. But it's tough to look at some of these results because they, they talk to us about, you know, the results tell us whether our children are in need of support, mm -hmm. if we're close to being college ready, if we're ready, right. or if we're exceeding that readiness right. standard. And um, it's tough to, to look at some of where our children are performing on this test. Um, and, and in various parts of the state, they've put a lot of attention on those results. Yeah. Not so much in central Alabama, but in other places. And I think, um, I know I've written about them on the Alabama School Connection mm -hmm. just to say, you know, here they are. And I think that these results give us an opportunity to have some conversations. Right. What do you think that these results tell educators? What, what is good about looking at these results through an educator's eyes? Well, so um, I think it's important to, to recognize um, from a big picture, the cold hard truth is that we've, we've set the bar too low for students for too long. Um, the Alabama reading and math test said, I'm going to estimate here, but it said roughly 80% of fourth graders were proficient in math. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, we every two years, students in Alabama would take the NAEP, which is the Alabama, the, excuse me, the National Assessment of Educational Progress. Right. It's given to a random selection of students nationwide every two years, and it's considered sort of a gold standard for um, how a state's educational system stacks up. Mm -hmm. um, typically, it would show. So let's take 2011 for example. In 2011, the ARMT in fourth grade said about 80 percent of students were proficient in math. The NAEP said about 30% of students were proficient. Mm. So you've got a big discrepancy there on uh, around who is actually doing math at a fourth grade level. Right. The results are similar in reading. The, the Aspire, the ACT Aspire measures students much more like the NAEP. Okay. If you look at the results um, that have come out now, you'll see roughly that that's the same numbers. And nothing is going to be exact because you're talking about using different measuring sticks. But the Aspire is much more like the NAEP. And, um, it is, it's, it's, a, it's both a uh, harder test that tests students at a higher level, it tests higher order thinking, and it also uh, expects more of them. So instead of just having students regurgitate facts and fill in uh, bubbles like on the ARMT, right. you've got um, open-ended questions on, on the ACT Aspire where students have to look at something on the page and analyze it and then construct their own response based on what they've learned in class. Sounds harder. It is. It, 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 it is harder, and the results right. have showed that. Right. Um, well, and it, we're we're going to go. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, I'd like for us to talk about how parents should be able to look at these results. Mm -hmm. What parents? Because I think that's what you know. When it all comes down to it, it's how does it affect us, and how yeah. does it affect and our it's children? It's tough to see. Right. You yeah. and I, we think about school districts in the state of Alabama, but parents and families who are watching really don't know what right. to do with these results right. because um, we're, we're scared of those labels. You know, we don't right. want our children, oh, they're a level one, you know, mm -hmm. or they're a level two, or, sure. oh, my child is a level four. You know, we don't really want to get into those labels. Yeah. It's more about, okay, how do we proceed? Um, I kind of look at it as like a weight loss journey almost. You know, it's like if my scale always tells me what I want it to say, 
I'm not helping myself, you know, right. if, I, if I'm actually not where I need to be. And that's kind of where this scale has been for a long time. Uh, it's a tough admission, but all right, so we'll be back in just a moment. Please Great. stay with us. Welcome back. Um, I'm Trisha Crane. This is Get Connected on the Alabama Way. Today we're talking with Thomas Raines about the ACT Aspire results. Um, Thomas is with the, he is the policy director for A Plus Education Partnership. And right before the break, uh, we were talking about uh, the results were kind of difficult to look at. Um, but there is a reason for this. There's a reason that we changed to a new test. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the results are lower than the, te than the test we had before, but the test before didn't really measure the things that we think that we need our children to know. So if you could speak a little bit to um, why, did, why was the change needed? Right, sure, so um, if you think big picture, mm -hmm. um, it used to be that a generation ago, somebody could, could drop out of high school and, and make a pretty good career for themselves mm -hmm. some way. Um, but we're at a point now where a lot of those jobs have disappeared with things like advances in technology have, have gotten rid of a lot of jobs that, that used to be um, around and, and common jobs. But like the, the horse and buggy driver, those jobs are, are gone. They're not going to come back. Right. So we're at a point now in Alabama where just in the next three to four years, um, depending on what study you look at, anywhere from two-thirds to 80% to of jobs in Alabama are gonna, gonna re require some kind of post-secondary education. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily a four-year degree from a liberal arts college, but mm -hmm. that could be a two-year degree or some type of industry certification. So mm -hmm. if students, if today's students are really going to succeed in that world, in that economy tomorrow, mm -hmm. we need to make sure that they can understand and use what they've learned in school and apply it in real life situations. Mm -hmm. And the ACT Aspire focuses on, on applying that knowledge and that's, that's part of the reason the change was necessary. Okay, so different set of skills are needed now, right? I mean, children really can't learn the same things. This is a conversation my yeah. mother and I have. Sure. You know, oh, school seems so hard these days, Trish. You know, and it's like, well, it is hard. It is harder, and there is more knowledge, and it's not just more history. Um, it's it's a getting to where you can apply that knowledge because right. memorization of facts only gets you so far. Right. Can get you on Jeopardy, and it can get you right. in trivia. You can do well in Trivial can Pursuit, do, right, and that's correct. about it. Yeah. Um, um, okay, so, if, so if, if we accept the idea, right, that we have the standardized test, mm -hmm. um, uh, one of the things that I hear parents talk about, uh, one of the, the concerns that they have is the amount of time that's being spent on test preparation. And I know sure. that's not really your area, so I, I, would, I would say, though, that um, one of the things that I come across is uh, parents who want to blame the state for that or blame the federal government. Look at all yeah, this test right. preparation. <clears throat> and it's really not the state or the federal government. It's really our local schools. Often and our, that is the case. Right. And right. our teachers and our principals and our maybe even our boards of education. Sometimes the folks at the central office are the ones saying we need more test prep. And I should clarify test prep, what I'm saying there is test preparation, and that's the practicing the skills of how to take a test. I mean, those are useful yeah. skills, but you shouldn't spend hours and hours right. on that sort of right. thing. Um, also, you know, uh, teaching to a test mm -hmm. is what we're trying to avoid now, right. right? We kind of got off track a little bit with No Child Left Behind right. in the beginning. Right. We decided that maybe it was good to teach to the test, but as you have said, the test prep is really the whole year, right? Ideally, that's right. where we would get where um, it would be impossible for any school to, to or any teacher to, to teach to a test, that right. they would need to spend the entire year teaching their students to think in mm -hmm. such a way that they can perform well on a test. And you can look at study after study that's shown the best schools are not doing test prep. The best schools mm -hmm. are teaching their students how to think. Right. The test is a byproduct. And I'm glad you mentioned No Child Left Behind because I think it's important to remember that we're beyond that in Alabama. We've we've gotten rid of that AYP, you know, that right. used to be a, a dirty word as a right. thing of the past. Right. Um, and and testing is not high stakes like it used to be. Right. It's still important. Um, it still gives us an idea of where students stand and where schools stand. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not something that that 
uh, teachers and parents and, and administrators and students need to need to fear or to need to try to game the system. Right, right. With. That's very important. And I think it's one of those things where we have trained our teachers and our children and our our schools that it is high stakes. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to take a couple of years to sort of work out of our system. Yeah, understandably. Where it, we yeah. trust yeah. that that really isn't going to be used to punish our schools. Right, you know, right. test results. And that brings me to the next topic, which is, you know, okay, so we get these standardized test results. We mm -hmm. get the results of the ACT Aspire, and there, uh, I've seen the, um, I've published about this, and y'all have published mm -hmm. about this on A, and that is that uh, you get a pretty good set of information that tells you where maybe right. your child's deficits are. Right. You know, where do they need some shoring up? Um, and if you're one of the 1% whose children, you know, don't need any showing up, congratulations. But sure. most of us have children that, you know, need some, some support. You can't know everything. So what, what do you think, you know, what's some good advice for parents when they get these results? What should parents do? I, I mean, hopefully there's going to be somebody from the school mm -hmm. who's going to help you interpret them. But I have heard cases where, you know, parents just get the results and there's really nobody there to help sure. them. Well, in, in most cases, I think parents parents are busy, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it needs to be something that's easy for them to, to understand and read. And, and I would hope that um, teachers would be available to, mm -hmm. to go over it with them. And, and one of the things that's exciting about the ACT Aspire is the, the reports that come back. And, and we've got examples of this on our website in, mm -hmm. in the article that you mentioned and in the policy brief that we did looking at the Aspire. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, re, the results come back with a, a graph that shows whether or not a student is on track to being college and career ready. Right. Um, and if they're, if they're not on track in fifth grade, that really provides an opportunity to the adults surrounding the student to come together and f find a solution to, to getting that student back on track and, and help to, to pull up his, his reading ability or his math ability, mm -hmm. um, whatever, wherever he's lagging. Mm -hmm. and, and that brings up another good point, which is, that partnership, right? That team, mm -hmm. teacher, parent, and student. If right. the students are older, particularly, you right. know, let's talk about, well, maybe a little more time on your math homework. Or, you know, I don't want to go out and, and say, well, let's get a tutor, because I think teachers are perfectly capable of teaching in our classrooms. Sure. And so, but having those conversations and, you know, being respectful and understanding that, sure, teachers have 20 or 25 children in their classroom sometimes. But those are conversations that really need to be had where parents, I, I, you know, the language, often we don't have the language. And I think it can be as simple as sending an email or sending a note with your teach, your child to school, mm -hmm. calling the school and saying, you know, I really need some help understanding these results. I, I find that teachers respond well to oh, that. Sure, you know, in, sure. and I think the danger is, you know, you don't, assigning blame. Why is my child scoring you know, this way on this test, I don't, th that doesn't usually get us very far. And I think there's always something to learn in these test results. Um, and like you say, the nice thing about the ACT Aspire is you do have these visually graphic levels. Right. Uh, but, the, but the frustration is we won't get a look at those visual and again until after the next spring's testing. Sure. And right? that's, and that's, um, that's something that will hopefully improve in the future. This mm -hmm. year, the first year of the ACT Aspire, the results took way too long to come back. True. Students took True. the test in at the end of April, beginning of May, and the test results didn't get back to the districts until September or October. Mm. Now we've been told that in future years it should just this should be a turnaround time of just a couple of weeks. Okay. Um, possibly by the end of the school year, maybe maybe just after the end of the school year, it'll be much faster. Still, that provides information to the teachers next year. Mm -hmm. But another thing that we have that pairs with ACT Aspire is Global Scholar, which provides um, right. tools for formative assessments for teachers to use right. and get feedback on where their students are throughout the year. Mm -hmm. and, and I liken these, what we call formative assessments, which is what Global Scholar is, kind of like pop quizzes, right? <laughs> the in teachers, some cases, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know, it, it, especially, you know, if you're, you're in your older grades and they want to make sure that you've kept up with your reading or something, right? So these, these formative assessments are really what parents should tune into oh, uh, all along yeah. the year yeah. and um, get familiar with these assessments. and. You know, talk with your child. Some children have test anxiety. Um, talk with the teacher. You know, how do we make this all just a normal part of going to school? Yeah. Uh, because too much emphasis on any one part of school 
uh, is a problem. Well, Thomas, I really appreciate you coming and talking with us about this. Uh, Happy to do it. We're often, the parents and the families are often the last ones to know. Right. And uh, it's very nice that there, there's A Plus Education Partnership. And again, I'm going to link your well, article. Well, and ASC. At, yeah. Right, Aldo yeah. School Connection. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Um, uh, you know, to, to try to keep parents and families and community members in the know. Definitely. Thank you for watching today, and uh, we'll see you next time.